Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review and a special expansion review. And today I'm very excited for checking out Aeons in the Outer Dark from Indie Board and Cards and Action Phase Games. This is for one to four players. Take about 60 minutes to play and it's for ages 14 plus. And this is an expansion to the incredibly spectacularly awesome cooperative deck builder Aeons N. It's going to add two new bad guys, it's going to add two new good guys, it's going to add some more relics, some more spells and uh, lots of really cool stuff. I love the base game. I've loved every expansion up to this point. Is this one any different? Let's open it up, check out all what's inside, and I'll give you my thoughts on it. All right, then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of Aeon's Inn, The Outer Dark, the expansion. So uh, there are no instructions with this one, so we'll just get straight down to what's in here. So first and foremost, you're gonna get two new bad guys, the Wraith Mongerer and the Thrice Dead Prophet. So we'll start with the Thrice Dead Prophet. He's definitely interesting. He's only gonna start with 40 health, but as he unleashes, he's going to gain five life. And if he has more than 60 life, then he's going to get more nemesis tokens, which is bad. Also, he has his own secondary win condition, where if his deck ever runs out, he actually wins the game. So he will actually be trashing cards off the top of his deck. Many of his exclusive cards will do that. It's a very interesting one there. Uh, my favorite, though, is the Wraith Monger. So this one actually comes with this extra little board right here, the Terror Mat, which you're going to be utilizing. Now, what's going to happen is when he unleashes the player with the fewest terror tiles, is going to claim the highest numbered tile and eventually it's going to go down and as it goes down worse and worse things are going to happen to that person discard a card suffer two damage lose two charges discard three cards in hand or suffer four damage it's going to progressively get worse also another interesting thing is when you get these they are going to cover your special ability so you will no longer be able to use your special ability which for some characters is absolutely stinking huge especially if you're focusing your strategy around that character's special ability so definitely some interesting stuff here also you will be able though to get rid of these if you get four charges if you turn in four charges then you'll be able to get rid of all of these tiles that are on everybody's thing so two very interesting characters there so next we have the two new good guy characters which obviously one of the great things about this game is each character is their own unique character so first we'll start with indira who is definitely out there as you can see she's only gonna have one breach grand total which sounds absolutely terrible but her unique aspect is she's going to be shooting stuff out of her hand all the time so her special ability is cast any number of spells in hand those spells each deal one additional damage. So you're going to be trying to get those spells into your hand. Also, you may destroy a card in your discard pile. So you'll be able to trash your gems just to get those valuable spells. So you're going to be like this weapon just ready to shoot off. And it only costs four charges down here. Now, her unique card that she's going to get is she's going to get the twin opals. And these are the twin opals right here. They're going to allow her to gain a buck. But more importantly, they can cast a spell in hand. So she's going to be all about casting spells out of her hand. Now, Next we have Remnant, who I also really like. They're going to get their own unique uh, breach right here, which will allow them to gain some money once they open it and they start casting stuff. But special ability is that any ally returns two cards from their discard pile to their hand. So they're going to have seven cards in their hand, which is great. Or Gravehold gains five life. So really like that special ability because it gives a little bit more versatility. If Gravehold needs some health, you can use him. Or if you just want to have two cards in your hand, two extra cards in your hands, very, very useful. Now, the other really cool thing is he has this. It's called the Void Shard. He's going to gain a buck and he gains an additional buck that can only be used to focus or open a breach. So he's going to be all about getting all those breaches open as fast as possible especially with that void shard so two very cool characters i actually like both of them an awful lot but let's talk about the cards 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 you're going to get in the game i'm not going to go too much over these cards right here these are the special cards that you're going to get uh for the bad guys so you got like the lost watcher discard the top card of the nemesis deck so this is for the thrice dead because as i mentioned he has a unique victory condition where if all the cards in the Nemesis deck are gone, then he actually wins the game. So I'm not going to go too much into these. These are nice, fun little stuff that you'll get when you play the game. But let's talk about what you probably do want to see, which is the spells. 
the relics, the gems. Oh, I love the gems in this game. So first we have the Pain Spone Stone. You're going to gain three bucks or gain two bucks and deal one damage. So that one's interesting. You know, it, it's pretty basic, but let me tell you. Oh, that alien. Yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that. Next we have the Haunted Barrelite. Gain two bucks or discard a card in hand if you do gain two charges. This is is huge this is only going to cost you three and if you discard a card in hand it doesn't even have to be this card any card you can gain two charges so that's great that is absolutely spectacular especially if you have a super useful special ability you're going to be cycling to next we have the alien eminent for each of your breaches with the spell prepped in it gain an additional one buck so uh this one's a great one to have spells squatted up there like if you can open up all those breaches and just keep your spells up there especially if there's some spells that might give you persistent special abilities this one paired with that can be incredibly powerful. So, next we have Scorch. You're going to deal 4 damage. If this damage causes a minion from the Nemesis deck to be discarded, and an ally gains 2 charges. Obviously useful to gain in those charges. The Pyromancy. They really like this one. Deal 1 damage. Allies, allies may collectively discard up to 2 cards in hand. For each card discarded this way, deal 3 additional damage. You're going to be dealing some super heavy damage with this card, especially if you're going with a 4-player game. Uh, next we have the Nether Conduit. Reveal a card in hand that costs 2 bucks or more if you do deal damage equal to the number of cards missing in that card supply pile then any ally may gain a card from that supply pile so as the supply pile goes down this card is going to get better and better uh, feedback or aura deal three damage if you have four or more charges deal three additional damage catalyst deal two damage if you have two life or less deal five additional damage char deal six damage if this damage causes a minion to be discarded any player gains two life this one is absolutely freaking spectacular a healing card that also does damage but as you'll see it costs eight which is yeah that's a lot and we have the two relics we have the riddle spear gain one charge or you may lose two charges if you do gain five bucks that one's really good as well especially uh i found when we paired it up with uh which one was it I don't remember which one it was, but if we paired it up with one of the specific characters that got a lot of charges and that card worked really well, I think it was one of the, one of the earlier expansions. I'm going to stop rambling. Then we got the Astral Cube. Return a gem. You played this turn to your hand. Reveal the top card of the turn order deck. If you revealed a player's turn order card, that player gains one life. Also, really, really cool card because it's going to be allowing you to persistently heal people throughout the game. But that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to get inside of Aeon's Ends, The Outer Dark. Alrighty then, Aeons and the Outer Dark. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, uh, every single con that I've ever mentioned for any Aeons End game in the expansions or any of the other expansions is present here. If you don't like cooperative, if you don't like deck builders, if you don't like difficult games, this one might not be for you. Uh, that being said, this one does actually have some cards that really stink and help out, gaining you lots of charges, helping people heal a little bit more. But still, all the problems that you had with the original Aeon's End, if you had those problems, expect that. This is not going to change your mind. This is an expansion for people who already love the game and nothing more. Um, any of the cons that I have with the game? I mean, no. I mean, if you don't like Aeon's End, you're not going to like this expansion. That's the biggest thing. But moving on to the pros, this is another outstanding small box expansion for Aeon's End. It's going to give you two more monsters. Like, you already didn't have enough monsters if you had the other expansions. This one's going to add two more, and I actually like both of them. I think I like the Wraithmonger a little bit better than that Thrice Dead Prophet. But I will say that Prophet is really interesting because that the, the fact that they have that win condition, you know, of if their cards run out, then they win the game. That's that's really unique, and I actually really like that. But also, at the same time, that means that they're going to be cycling through their deck faster, getting to those three cards faster, and those three cards absolutely are going to wreck you. Uh, I like that. I like that an awful lot. Also, I really like pretty much all the spells and relics in the game. Some of the, I think there's maybe like two or three that are a little bit generic, but for the most part, I really like the spells that are included in the game. I really stink and like both of the new heroes. I like both the new heroes an awful lot. I am particular like Indira. I think she's one of my new favorite heroes because she is just attack, 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 attack. And if you have somebody else, and this is one of those ones... You know, normally we randomize when it comes to playing A on Z, but this one, if you can sync her up with someone that's going to be putting spells into her deck, especially powerful spells, 
Oh my goodness, she will just unleash hell. If you can have one character who's all about getting charges to her and one character who's all about getting her spells, she's just going to unload on people. So I really like her. I also really like Remnant too. I like the fact that he's a little bit versatile. He could do that healing or he can make it so that other people can draw two cards. So he's a little bit more like a, a healer sort of role. You know, if you're familiar with uh, a lot of games that have healers. Uh, in the end though, it's fantastic. I mean, it's just another outstanding expansion to Aeon's End. And Aeon's End continues to be one of my favorite deck builders of all time. And the more expansions they put out for this game, the more I'm going to like this game because it just gives it more versatility. Each time you play as a different character, you're going to have a slightly different experience on what you're trying to do and puzzling together how you're going to win the game. Each time you play against a different monster, those monsters really are different. And you need to prepare and fight each one a little bit differently. And, you know, I'm pretty much just smoozing on Aeon's End right now. So Aeon's End, The Outer Dark, it's pretty simple. If you like Aeon's End, yes, get this. It's great. It's fantastic. Two new heroes, two new bad guys, more cards. What more could you possibly want? If you don't like Aeon's End, then, then get out of here. No, you shouldn't get it. You still dislike Aeon Zen for whatever reason you like Aeon Zen. So, if you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below and in the comments below. Let me know. What's your favorite deck builder of all time? This one, man, deck builders are some of my favorite games. I really am. And I am almost kind of torn. So, for the longest time, Dominion was my favorite deck builder. And then I think Star Realms kind of creeped up there. Because I love, I stinking love Star Realms. And then last year, 2016... Aeon's End and Vikings Gone Wild came out, and they're just like dueling to the death, and I love both those games so much, but I still think Aeon's End is my favorite deck builder of all time, and the fact that they're supporting it with more and more expansions. My box is super duper heavy, and I have another expansion that I still need to play. Oh, I'm so excited about it. But, uh, yeah, I'm rambling again. What's your favorite deck builder of all time? For me personally, it is, in fact, Aeon's End, but what is yours? As always, thanks for your time, YouTube.